What's going on, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite, also known as Tariq Nasheed, also known as King Flex, also known as Denzel Sausageton. What's up, ladies? What's up, gentlemen? All my players, playettes, Mac simps, suckers, everybody out there, whoever you are, captains, tricks, players, pimps, anybody who wants to soak up this game, I welcome you. White, black, Puerto Rican, Eskimo, Creole, Armenian, Martian, I don't give a damn who you are. Come on, soak up this game on the Mac Lessons Radio Show. Today's show is going to be a very good show, but let me say, today's show is brought to you by the new album by my dude, T-Shock. His album is called T-Shock the World. Let me play a cut from the T-Shock album. It's available at Amazon.com and iTunes.com. T-Shock the World. You want to live life? You got to pay for Chase Chase. You want the fancy car? You got to pay for Chase Chase. I want to live big. That's my dude, T-Shock. His album is called T-Shock the World. You get that at iTunes and Amazon.com. And don't forget, you guys can get the brand new pay-per-view special that I just did called Sex Magic. Real good game in that special. You can get that at Mac Lessons. Dot com real good game in that pay-per-view special also the documentary hidden colors is going to be in select theaters around the country in new york it will be i think it's going to be at a place called cinema village on sunday april 17th that's when it's going to air in new york in atlanta i think it will air April 16th at the Plaza Theater. So we're getting everything confirmed and I will have all the confirmed dates for everybody next week. And you guys have to come on out. And I'm going to let people know the L.A. screening too. So it's going to be L.A., New York, and Atlanta. Come on out to the movie theaters to see Hidden Colors. It's going to be off the chain. New York, we're going to have two showings in New York because that's definitely going to be sold out. I know the Atlanta one is going to be sold out. And we're still trying to get the venue out here in Los Angeles. So support and go to HiddenColorsFilm.com to get more information about Hidden Colors. HiddenColorsFilm.com. Real good stuff, man. And everybody's very excited about it. The documentary, they're still finishing up on the edits. And it looks absolutely wonderful. And you guys are going to really enjoy it. And um, um, this week on Ustream... We're going to have a contest again. I've been promising to have this contest. We're going to have the best dress female contest. A few months ago, we had on, on National Players Day in December. You know, December 1st is National Players Day. And we had a contest for the brothers, for the players. We had the best dress player contest, gave the best dress player 100 bucks. They submitted pictures on Facebook, and then we showed the pictures on Ustream, and everybody judged. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the same thing this Sunday on Ustream. Now, what I want the ladies to do for the Best Dressed Female Contest, submit your photos to my Facebook page. Submit all your photos to my Facebook page, to my Facebook fan page. Because my other Facebook page, if you're not my friend already, um, I I think I have too many friends there. So go to the Tariq Elite fan page. You can find that page by going to MacLessonsRadio.com. And it's right there on the right-hand side. You guys can add yourself to the Facebook Tariq Elite fan page. And you can submit your pictures there, ladies. And we're going to show the pictures on Ustream this Sunday. What the hell is the date today? Whatever the date is, I, I, I don't have my calendar in front of me. But I, I think I've seen a lot of motherfuckers with welfare checks, so it must be around the first. I, I, I've seen all the lace fronts and weave glue sold out of Sally's Beauty Supply, so it must be around the first of the month right now. But this weekend, that's when we're going to have the contest. My players and playettes on Ustream, they're going to judge. And you guys check me out on Ustream if you don't know how I get down on Ustream. We have a ball on Ustream. We chop up a lot of good game for hours at a time on Ustream. And I'm going to do a Ustream show actually tonight. So check that out around 7 o'clock tonight, West Coast time, 10 o'clock East Coast time. We'll do a Ustream show tonight and we just shoot the breeze, chop up game. 
And again, like I said, submit your pictures, ladies, best dressed ladies. Then we're going to judge up this Sunday. The best dressed female will get a hundred bucks. It's that simple. No catch, no bullshit. That simple. All right. So submit your pictures to the Tariq Elite fan page. Now, today is going to be a, a game for women show today. I want to sh- chop up some game for the ladies. But before I do that, let me see who's on the phone. We got so many callers. Who's calling? All right, this is Damo from um, Brooklyn. What's up, Damo from Brooklyn? How you doing, brother? Good. I got an awesome scenario, man. Good. You know, I read the book, so uh, this is like really out the ordinary. All right. Um, Got this chick. Seen her in class last semester. I'm a freshman. First semester. I went over there and started spitting because, you know, I really wanted her. So, spitting. So, it's like a while before I really tell her I'm feeling her. So, I tell her, she, um, like, I threw a hint. And then she was like, she only see me as a friend. Okay. So, this semester, this semester she seen me when I was walking with my my mans. And she, like, was talking to somebody. And she stopped talking to them. Went out there, went out her way, like, really out her way. To come sit without the me, she's sitting there cheesing in my face. I'm not saying nothing because I'm like, I know what you, you played me. So, <clears throat> so she's starting up a little conversation. Damo, and, man, Damo, you got to get to the point, player. You giving me the whole Gettysburg address. Right. Like, let's get to the point. Right, so she, get to the point, so, bro. Right, so she told, so she told me to text her. Okay. Do I text her? I don't have a number no more though. Okay. Um. If she told you to text her, text her one time. Just text her one time to see what's going on with her, see what the vibe is, and just make sure she's not teasing you and all that. But just text her one time, get a vibe on her, and if she's playing games, just charge her ass. But just text her and see where she's coming from and go ahead and hook it up with her. Thanks for the call, Damo. Okay, goddamn. And I wanted some of the ladies to call up because Damo sounded like he was riding a bike and trying to talk on the phone at the same time. Y'all got to keep it Mackish. Don't mess up my Mackish vibe. Hello, who's calling? Hello? Now, this motherfucker don't want to say nothing. Hello? Y'all messing up my vibe. I'm trying to chop up game and y'all call it not saying shit. Like a goddamn bill collector. I'm about to take one more call and I'm going to just get into the game. I told you, it must be the first of the month. Motherfuckers then went and got some drugs and alcohol with their county checks and they acting a goddamn fool on the phone. Hello? Hey, what's going on, King Flex? What's going on, brother? Uh, do we have a normal call right here, brother? What's on your mind? Man, look, I, I'm not sure if you watch college basketball or not, but what's your, uh, what's your outlook on these suckers out here doing these damn pre-game dances and shit, man? <laughs> I think that's some real coony shit. That's some coony shit. It makes me fucking sick. Man, again, I'm going to do a show about that. We, we, we dance a little bit too much. We always buck dancing and partying, and I agree with that, man. I haven't, I don't know too much about the pre-dance college thing, but I can imagine them doing that because we always find a reason hey. to get up and dance for some shit. If you see if you seen this shit, it'll make you fucking sick. They might go have their fucking faces painted black, man. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you for the call, player. All right, enough of the calls. Enough of the calls. Enough of the calls. Y'all ready to hear some good game, right? Y'all ready for me to chop up game, and I'm ready to chop it up. I wish I could screen the calls to see if some because I wanted some ladies to call up. I put out a, a thing on Facebook for the ladies to call up. Let me see. I want to get a, a, a cool female on the phone. Hello, hello. Well, let me get let me get somebody. Hello. Yeah, what's up, just Tariq? Yes, what's up, man? Who's calling? Just KB, all the way down from the MIA, baby. What's happening? What's, what's happening down in Miami, man? I would love to come down to Miami to do a lecture, man. Hey, well, we are gonna try to get you down here, but we 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 love you supporting. Um, um, this is KB from Stone Music Production. We love you supporting T Shock. Yes. T Shock the World. Yes, absolutely. And um we appreciate you doing that. I appreciate but we're gonna try you. to get you down. We're gonna try to get you down here, man. We try we try to get it together, man, because we love your show, brother. I love it, man. Thank you very much, brother. All right, let me let me get into some game. There we go. All right, so today's show, like I said, we're doing a show, a game for women's show. So I want all my ladies to pull up chairs and I'm about to lace my lady folks up with some real good game and my fellas y'all can learn some good game too the fellas you can soak the game up yourself because ladies always getting on me about not doing enough 
shows for them. They want me to do more shows for them. And the show is really catered to the guys, but I'd like to lace the ladies with game too because I have a lot of female listeners and a lot of ladies come out to my lectures. And I got my lectures coming up soon, ladies, so don't trip. What I want to talk about today, ladies, I want to let you know or help you help you find out if you are in a relationship or if you are dating a first degree player. See, there's a big difference between just dating a player because there's different types of players and all men have a little player in them. See, that's too general. It's the degree of player you need to find out you're dating. You understand that, ladies? Don't try to be like, oh, I don't want no man who's a player. All of us are fucking players. Get that shit out of your head. Get that fucking Cliff Huxtable bullshit out of your head. All of us are players. We just go through stages. Get that in your goddamn head, ladies, right now. We just go through stages. You just have to catch us in the right stage. Now, like I said, you should be weary of dating the first degree player though. Let me explain the three degrees of being a player. The first degree player, that's when a guy becomes sexually active. And I talk about this in my books. I've even talked about this on the show. That's when a guy becomes sexually active first. So when a guy becomes sexually active, usually in his mid-teens, he's playing real dirty with the game for the most part because a lot of times he's thinking how can I get more sex I will do or say anything I need to say or do to get more sex from different women so that's basically what a first degree player is now a second degree player that's a dude who has kind of mastered a certain technique he has found a a routine to use in order to get women Now, he's still a player. He likes to have multiple women because that's the ultimate tenant of a player is to have multiple women when he's in his second degree player stage. See, he has a pattern and he likes to to use and perfect that pattern of getting women. And the second degree player, in, in in a way, he's trying to find himself. He's trying to discover himself. So he tries out different women to see what he likes and to see what he wants to eventually settle down with. So he has to go through that stage. It's like going to a buffet in Las Vegas. Have all any of you people been to Las Vegas and been to a buffet or been to a casino or just been on the strip trying to figure out what buffet to go to? Uh, There's one buffet, I think it's at the Rio Hotel in Vegas. It has like all these different foods from all over the world. If you ever go to Vegas, you need to go there. But the thing is, When a a person is at a buffet and that's like a second degree player, he's walking through. He's like, well, well, those tacos look good. Let me try that. That Asian food looks pretty good. Let me taste a little piece of that. Wow, they got chicken wings. Let me try that. Let me see what their macaroni and cheese is like. You're just trying everything out until eventually you find one type of meal that you like and when you go back to that buffet you're going to keep going for that same meal just like a restaurant or whatever you keep trying different things and then you find something you like and that becomes your spot that's what a second degree player that's his mentality that's how he is with women he tries out different women he sees what he likes he he sees the kind of ass he likes he sees the kind of oral sex he likes he sees the kind of mentality and the woman he likes he tries all of this out and then he he'll see a positive thing in one female and look for it in another female so he puts it all together in his mind until he finds that then he'll settle down with that he'll take it to that third degree player stage And the third degree player stage is a guy who already knows the game and he's playing for quality instead of quantity. So there's nothing wrong with a third degree player. He's all about the quality of the female because he has ran the field. He's tried the buffets. He's tested the waters. He didn't bang a couple of skanks. He didn't bang a a couple of top-notch females. He didn't try the Asian girl, the white girl, the Mexican girl. He didn't try a few different things. He didn't traveled and been around the world and put his bed in. And now he knows what he likes. And he knows what he dislikes. And that helps him make decisions on who to settle down with. 
So that's the guy that you should be going for. Unfortunately, ladies, a lot of you ladies, you end up in relationships with that first degree player. Big mistake. First degree players are the absolute worst people to be in relationships with. Absolute worth it. And I was a first degree player when I was a kid, when I was a teen. And I'm saying this from experience. We're just not the niggas to be in relationships with. Especially if you are a true to the game player like I was. I was first degree all day. Dirty macking. You understand? First degree players are straight dirty macking. They don't give a fuck. They play to win. You understand that? The dirty macking of a first degree player is a take no prisoners mentality they play to win so ladies let me give you seven tips I give you seven tips to look for to see if you might be dating a first degree player and ladies if you figure out that you're dating a first degree player you should just understand the casualness of it don't get mad it is what it is and just accept it and do what you need to do And I'm saying this for women who are trying to get into committed relationships. Make sure that you need to be in a committed relationship. Sometimes your mind ain't where it should be to be in a committed relationship. Sometimes you need to do the casual thing. But if you're trying to settle down and get into a real situation, you definitely don't want to have that first degree player. Now, let's look at some of the things and and follow me. Feel me on this, ladies. Feel me. Now, number one, ladies. If you meet a dude and he's way too romantic, way too soon. I mean, this nigga's all flowers. That nigga's roses. That nigga is just rolling out the red carpet for your ass. Right when you meet him, you just met this nigga and he's like whining and dining your ass real heavy. It's on some Cinderella shit. He's saying all that right shit, all the romantic shit. This nigga's writing poems. He's really putting it on within days of meeting you. It sounds good. It feels good. It looks good. But if it's too soon, it's suspicious because if he's doing it that soon with you, that means that's some shit that that nigga has perfected, that this nigga has practiced on. And you have to look at yourself and say, wait a minute, I'm a cool bitch, but I ain't. You know, this nigga reading poems. What did I do to this nigga to make him want to read me a poem? You have to look at it like that. This nigga is showing up to your house singing bullshit ass songs. Till the end of time. Take my heart, hold it tight, and it's true love. <clears throat> I gotta be the one you touch on. Oh, baby, I gotta be the one you love. Telling you that Yeah, so if niggas show up to your house with that bullshit, you have to look at that and say, wait a minute. Why is he doing this too soon? Just like with dudes. When a dude meets a female and she's you just met her and she's all lovey dovey and she's gobbling balls like she's going out of her mind, it feels great. And we love it, but we have to have in the back of our mind how many of the niggas did she do this to? And women, you have to think the same way. How many other chicks is this nigga being all extra romantic with? And usually that's his M.O. He's doing that with everybody. And he has learned what women want to hear. Because if a guy is really cool and he's trying to to be sincere with you and he wants a genuine relationship, he'll be a little extra with it, but he ain't going to just be over the top with it. Because again, a sincere guy is going to be sincere no matter what. He's not going to be over the top, just going out of his way to show you how romantic he is. I mean, the minute you stand up, this nigga leaps over the table to pull the chair out and all that. That's extra first degree player shit. We're buttering your ass up because we're going to fuck all your friends. They're getting your mind right. They're they're seasoning you because they're going to go holler at your mom on the on the low. You watch out for that, ladies. Now, let's look at number two. If you're in a relationship with a guy who may be a first degree player, if you have been in the relationship with the guy for a long time and some suspicious behavior starts showing up and this nigga starts snitching on himself. 
if you ask your man a very casual question, and that's the thing, a lot of first degree players, they haven't mastered a lot of the techniques yet. So a lot of their reactions are very emotional. So let's say your dude come home late. He comes home late and you say, hey, babe, damn, you came home about two hours late. Where were you? Then this nigga say, well, I wasn't fucking nobody. Damn. Oh, what, what, that what you say? I, I, you act like I'm fucking somebody. I wasn't fucking nobody. I'm like, damn, dude, I didn't say nothing about you fucking nobody. I just asked where you were. Oh, because you, you real accusatory right now, baby. That's all I'm saying. And you act like I was fucking some bitches from the strip club or some shit. This nigga will start telling on himself. Just listen to him. When, when you ask him a question and he starts running off at the mouth of what he's not doing, just listen to that nigga. That's exactly what his ass was doing. Now let's go to number three, ladies, of what you need to know to see if you're dating a first degree player. Especially if you're dating a guy who's kind of standoffish, you date a guy who's somewhat of a loner in the relationship, because guys, we want our space. I talk to women about that all the time, about guys who are not too, too affectionate, because a lot of women will complain about their men not being affectionate enough. And like I said earlier, you don't want a guy who's overly affectionate, but don't trip when your guy is not all lovey-dovey but the thing is if you have a guy who's somewhat of a loner a guy who likes his own space which is what most of us like as men if you're dating a guy like this and all of a sudden this nigga starts cupcaking and cuddling and this nigga becomes all lovey-dovey touchy-feely all of a sudden you gotta watch out for that that's first degree player behavior because he's trying to compensate for some shit that he has done See, a first-degree player, again, they react emotionally to things. See, a guy who has mastered the game, he's not going to do all that. A true-to-the-game second-degree player, he'll do his thing and just remain cool no matter what. He'll have the same demeanor. He has mastered his emotions, so he's going to keep the same mindset. That nigga can sit up and bang all your roommates, and he'll still be sitting up here chilling like nothing is phasing him. That nigga won't bat an eye. Nothing will change about this dude. That nigga will have a double life and act it out to the T. But the first degree player, he doesn't have that 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 mental stamina to do that. So all of his shit is going to be reactional. Everything is going to be very emotional. It's going to swing from one pendulum to the other. So if he does some dirt, he's going to go and compensate it emotionally. So this nigga's going to come home and be all cuddled up and painting your toenails for you and just going to be all lovey-dovey. That's first degree player shit. You need to look out for that. Now, ladies, number four, the fourth thing that you should remember when you're dealing with the first degree player is if this nigga starts forgetting his lies. And women, you've dated dudes like this. You've dated these first degree players. These niggas don't know how to lie right. They tell lies and forget the lie they told. So you chilling with the nigga and you're like, hey, babe, um, so when are we going to go to your summer house in the Hamptons? You're like, what summer house? What are you talking about? Your, your summer house in the Hamptons. Baby, what you talking about? Baby, you remember when I met you, you told me you had a summer house in the Hamptons. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 baby. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't have a house no more. It, uh, it had got foreclosed or, uh, but yeah, I, I don't have a house no more. So when you, you, you've heard niggas tell lies like that, that's first degree player lie lies because a second degree player he remembers all the shit that he says he has a certain pattern and also a lot of second degree degree players they're going to keep it 100 if they're real thorough with their game they'll keep it 100 and let females know what the deal is so they wouldn't even have to lie anyway but those first degree players they still have to lie to kick it so you watch out for these niggas who forget their lies now let's go into number five Number five, the fifth way to tell if you're dating a first degree player, ladies, if this nigga will change the subject when you try to talk about commitment, when you try to talk about the seriousness of the relationship or taking it to another level, then he immediately changed the subject because the second degree player, they'll let you know what the deal is. They're like, look, babe, you know, we're cool where we are right now. If a woman is trying to get too heavy with a second degree player, he'll he'll break it down. Like the baby don't, don't just relax. We, we're doing our thing. I'm not trying to get too heavy right now. I'm just doing me. 
That's the famous player saying ever. Baby, I'm just doing me. I know you want to get married. I know we've been together for 15 years, but baby, I'm I, I'm doing me. <laughs> How many of y'all players then said, I'm doing me? How many of y'all women have heard the I'm doing me line? That's second degree player all day. But a first degree player, they don't know how to break it down like that. A first degree player, <laughs> my chickens over here laughing at me. A first degree player, <laughs> first degree player, he ain't that smooth. You'll be like, hey, baby, um, I'm thinking about, you know, we've been together for like three years. You know, we, we, we've been down with each other. What's, what are we going to do with this relationship? But hold on for a second. I got to call my mom. This nigga get on the phone. Mama, you still need me to come over there? Okay, but babe, babe, I got to go check on my mom. This nigga just blatantly changed the subject. You try to talk to this dude about starting a family. He's like, what? Um, you know what? I got to go. Um, I got to go back to my job for one minute. We're going to talk about it when I get back, but I'll be right back. So he'll quickly change the subject on your ass. So you watch out for that. That's the first degree player. Now let's go to number six. The number six way to tell if you are dating a first degree player. And ladies, this is a heavy one because I know a lot of women have probably gone through this. If your dude starts accusing you of random things. That's classic, classic first degree player shit. When a first degree player does dirt, he projects his dirt onto his significant other. First degree player all day. First degree player all day. They will project their dirt onto you. So if they're out here banging a bunch of broads, they're going to have to throw some kind of guilt complex on you. So you can be doing something very innocent. You can tell your man, hey, babe, um, I'm very hungry right now because I was at work and... I didn't even get a lunch break because my boss wanted me to come into the office and help out with inventory and everybody went to lunch without me and I'm starved. Yo dude would be like, oh, I bet you sucked that nigga's dick while you were in his office, didn't you? That's why you in there by yourself with him. You were in there sucking that nigga's dick. You be sucking. That's why you got a raise. You sucked your boss's dick, didn't you? When a nigga starts saying that, that's first degree player shit. He's trying to compensate for something. So you watch out for that, ladies. Now, ladies, the last thing, number seven. The number seven way to tell if you are in a relationship with a first degree player is when a guy will make excuses to slip away from a from the house for a short period of time. When a guy makes excuses or lame excuses to try to get a few minutes away from you or a few minutes to himself out of the blue, that's first degree player shit. Because you know he's going somewhere to text the female or call a female on the phone. If he's sitting up in the house and every 10 minutes he has to go shit. Oh, damn, my stomach, baby. I got to go to the bathroom. Um, let me get my phone and take it in there with me. When he's doing that, that nigga's in there texting. Or when this nigga has to go somewhere in the middle of the night for a few minutes. It's midnight. He's like, baby, is Taco Bell still open? Oh, damn, I, I just got a craving for a burrito. I'll be back in 10 minutes. That nigga's going to call a bitch. He's sitting up at the house. It's three in the morning. Baby, is 7-Eleven still open? I need a chapstick for work in the morning. I'm going to be right back. Then he comes back 20 minutes later. That nigga's out there calling a bitch. It's five in the morning. Baby, is Walmart open yet? I need some Vicks Vapor Rub for my chest. My chest is hurting. I'll be right back. He's out there calling a bitch. That's first degree player shit right there. Because a second degree player knows how to master his game better than that. So understand what you're dealing with, ladies. Those are the seven tips to look for to see if you're dating a first degree player. That's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. My name is Tariq Nasheed. Don't forget the Hidden Colors film coming out mid-April New York, Atlanta, and Los Angeles. Don't forget the Best Dressed Female Contest coming up on Ustream. I will be on Ustream tonight. Hit me up on Facebook. Hit me up on Twitter. Everybody should be my friends on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Tariq Nasheed. I will holler at you guys tonight on Ustream. Peace.